Good morning. It is 26 minutes after 7 o'clock and joining us in studio this morning for uh, his monthly visit here, Matt Bristol with Bristol Law Office. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. How you doing? Doing great. How about yourself? Doing good. Uh, I was listening to you and Sean earlier, and you already have a chili roaster. It's called a barbecue. It's true. <laughs> I to, I, it's true. You can cook them outside in your barbecue. But you can't brag about a chili roaster if you do it on your grill. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's not as cool as the actual real sure, thing. Sure, and you, know. you can't roll it around yeah. and get that whole thing going. So, But, you know. Good stuff. It is. But uh, for folks that aren't familiar, Matt joins us here once a month. And, and we talk uh, sage legal advice. Just uh, good information for uh, folks to hopefully keep in their back pocket if these... Uh, different scenarios and things because honestly if you're kind of living life the way most of us do and you you know you hit those certain milestones odds mm-hmm. are pretty good you're going to run across some of these uh, scenarios and things we discuss absolutely uh, as you progress in life so hopefully absolutely. not all of them you know hopefully you're not worrying about divorces and things like hopefully that not. but, but uh, you know mm-hmm. life happens and you got to deal with them as they come Absolutely. And so so today is kind of a weird segue. All right. So I've been helping uh, Troop 7. And okay. That's, that's an all-female Boy Scout troop. Yes, that was our first uh, all-female group here in Roswell. Uh-huh. And Troop 149 with their personal financial management merit badge. Ah, nice. Yeah, so it's been kind of fun to say 13-week merit badge. And they have to keep a budget for 13 weeks. Okay. So we're kind of working with them on, on how to do that. Sure. And then, uh, so the, on my CNN st- or CNBC stuff this weekend, I saw that uh, Britney Spears is mm-hmm. getting a prenuptial agreement. So she getting remarried? I, I'm not up on my uh, celebrity news here. I'd, last I'd heard about her, she was fighting in court to get her uh, basically financial independence back. Right. Um, she, uh, she's fighting the guardianship and, yes. and conservatorship. Mm-hmm. So a guardianship of the person and a conservatorship of the estate or the assets. Mm-hmm. So that's a good question. What does nuptial mean anyway? So a nuptial is basically the wedding night. Gotcha. So a prenup is before the wedding night, and a postnup is after the wedding night. So a prenup, I think, is good for a lot of people. And even though you know most people, when we get married, we don't have anything except it, it all fit in the car, right? Sure, for the most <laughs> part, yeah. 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 yeah, some of us are a little more organized than others. I mean, especially your first go round. If for hopefully your only go round, but mm-hmm. you know, for some people, their first go round. <laughs> and so most people don't have anything of value, and they say, "Well, why do I need a prenup if I don't have anything of value?" Yeah. And the reason is because it causes conversation. Mm-hmm. Most people don't talk about money, but if you talk about a at least prenup in general, at least now you're talking about well. How are we going to pay this bill? Who pays that bill? Do we divide them up? Sure. Uh, do we uh, split everything in half? Uh, do we have a, like a year's mine and hours account where the hours, the household account pays mm-hmm. certain bills? And uh, if so, how much does each person contribute? Sure. Is it based on dollars, percentage of income? So it gets people talking about money and how to handle them. Sure. Well, I, I think... Well, obviously, when most people, if you go up to most people and say, what is a prenuptial agreement, they're going to tell you that um, in the event of divorce, that protects assets and things like that. But in reality, that's that's just one of the symptoms of it. It really is just an agreement, a discussion, or a, doc, a legal document basically deciding who's, who's responsible for what in the marriage and what happens after the marriage, when and if this thing. And so... We always think it's protecting assets, but that's not really the full scope of what a prenuptial agreement is. It's more of just a, hey, this is just us uh, deciding what our, our our contract is for the marriage, so to speak. Yeah. And so, yeah, a lot of people say, well, but Gio, prenup is planning for divorce. And mm-hmm. the answer is no, not necessarily. Yeah. It's, it's as you say, it's a people have talked about and talked through a contract of well, how are we going to pay what bills and who's going to be responsible for them? Sure. And so, it, you know, it kind of gets a negative connotation there. It's mm-hmm. like, because like you said, yeah. as soon as you ask your partner, hey, we should do a prenuptial agreement, they're like, why? You think I'm going to divorce you? You don't trust me? I mean, right. all of those questions come out. Mm-hmm. But if you look at from what it really is versus what we all think it is, then you're like, okay, now this seems like a more smart way to go into a marriage. So. Um, you, you really have to unlearn what you think a prenuptial agreement is 
before you can under fully understand what it does and how it protects you. Well, also, if, if, if we remember from our previous conversations <laughs> about marriages, mm -hmm. is a marriage is like a business partnership, and any bills your partner runs up, you're liable for. Mm -hmm. So a prenup can, can say, can address that and can say, you know, Mike, any credit card debts you run up are your debts, and they're not my debts, mm -hmm. they ain't going to be responsible for them. Sure. Now, does that protect you from creditors and things? Like, you know, say, say uh, this goes south and everything, and in the prenup, it's, you know, it's on you for these. Uh, when it comes to credit ratings and reports like that, because you're still married, does that still affect that, or does that give you some kind of protection there? From credit reports and credit scores and bankruptcy and issues like that. Well, on uh, credit scores, the answer is I don't know. Okay. Now, creditors, the, the banks that issue the credit cards. Mm -hmm. So the bank initially is going to say, well, you're a married couple, the spouse is liable. And then that's when you pull the prenup and say, well, no, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And my spouse was running up the credit cards was supposed to have told you it was their sole and separate debt. Gotcha. And if they didn't do that, I'm sorry, but that's on them. That's not on me. Gotcha. So you are in a, in essence protected there. Yes. Okay. Very. I was curious about that because I was always wondering, I was like, well, shoot, if you know, if you go through bankruptcy or anything and all that and in mm -hmm. marriage, usually, you know, that's why people's credit gets ruined and things bankruptcy and divorce, because generally speaking, that puts wreaks havoc on there, but a prenup might save some of that if you do it right. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and we've seen uh, in, our, in our bankruptcy cases and divorce cases, um, it's not always one spouse that runs up the debt. It's usually both. Sure. But sometimes it's one, not always. Uh, and I've had people say, well, you know, my wife ran up the credit cards. That's her problem. And the answer is no. If you, that's incurred in the marriage or owed by both parties. Now, when a, when a spouse brings debt into the marriage does that become their debt once they're married or is it still the individual's debt well so uh, whether a debt or an asset mm -hmm. is community property or sold and separate property mm -hmm. depends on the date of acquisition okay so we look at the date of acquisition and so if the student loan debt was acquired pre-marriage then it's sold and separate okay that's the question. So once you get married, you're, you're not on the hook for your spouse's $50,000 uh, student loan or whatever. Generally, no. Gotcha. Yeah. And there's some little tiny quirks here and there. Because remember, your paycheck's community paycheck. Sure. Now, in a real marriage, you're talking about this and discussing it, working on ways to pay it down together. But in terms of, say, the marriage goes south, and now her student loan's not going to ruin your credit, or his student loan's not going to ruin your credit. You know? Yeah, and that's a good point. So if you know, somebody says, well, what about a prenup? Well, that's when the, oh, by the way, I've got, you know, $100,000 for the student loans out there. Mm -hmm. and generally, people just don't bring that up in a casual conversation. Yeah, that's true. Which you might want to, you know, think about these kind of things. So you might want to ask about it before you get married. And then... Yeah, at the altar is a bad time to find out about these things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then say, and then the next question is, and how are you planning on paying that off? Sure. Well, and in essence, because I don't care what you're on the hook for legal and what you aren't in essence, you become married, your finances become one together. It should be at least, you know, at least, you know, a plan and how we tackle it becomes one where the money comes and who keeps what that's, that's between y'all two. But, but as far as, all right, we got bills now, you need to come up and come up with a plan to, to address them together. Because if you don't, you're, you're, you're going to be having a lot more problems down the road. Well, and the other the other issue you need, people need to discuss and think about is, so Mike and Matt get married. Mike's got $100,000 of student loans. So we spend the next 10 years working very hard, paying off the debt, mm -hmm. and Mike wants a divorce. Does Matt get reimbursed for paying off Mike's debt? Yeah. No. No? No. Although you... Uh that would be an argument in court. You're going to lose it. But, I mean, that does sound like a valid argument. Well, the court can only divide things that exist. Mm. But, but there's no debt. There's no nothing to divide. Now, I, I know this is a stretch. Wait. But say you're able to prove that they started the marriage strictly to, to get married and pay off the debt. And is there a fraud case there? Or is that pretty reaching for straws there? Well, it's pretty reaching for straws because it's going to be he said, she said. <laughs> Unless you have actual evidence to prove it, like they wrote in a diary or something they plan to do this. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I, 
but the court can only divide things that exist. Sure. And once sure. the and once when I did is paid off, no thing exists to divide. Yeah. Same and I've seen that in divorce, where the divorce process is going on and one spouse says, Well, I'm just gonna pay off the my ex my future former spouse's credit card debt because I don't want my credit ruined. Mm-hmm. So they pay off the fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt and say, I want credit in the divorce and the answer is and there's no thing to divide. Once yeah. You paid that debt off. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of I guess once the the barn doors open, you can't, you know, <laughs> you can't uh, close it and expect the, the the cow to show up or yeah. hang out. Yeah. Same so way. so hopefully a prenup would have that kind of discussion mm-hmm. of well, gee, what kind of bills do you have out there? Sure. You know, how much debt do you carry? Let's let's unravel that that web and see what's going on here. Sure. Also, the conversation is going to somebody a spender, somebody a saver. I've had clients who say, well, I don't want to save my money. I want to spend it while I'm young enough to enjoy it. And that's fine. That's their choice. Mm-hmm. But what if the other spouse is a saver? He says, no, no, I want to save for retirement. So they may want to print up that says, well, if I'm saving for retirement, it's all mine. Gotcha. If we divorce, you don't get this. You don't get it because you've chosen not to sure. save for retirement. And if you're just going to blow your money, then I'm, I don't want you to have So you can set a print up that way. Mm-hmm. And that, uh, is that common? The, it depends on the situation. Uh, for second marriages, it's a really, really good idea. Okay. Uh, because if you've got children from the first marriage and that just, money, yeah, you don't want to, you know, whatever new family comes in, mm-hmm. you don't want to create the problem of the money that was scheduled for the old family gets, yeah, that's a whole week. Yeah, your child's inheritance goes to the second wife and yeah. then goes to her children. You want to, that, that's the stuff of, uh, well, nightly TV shows, to be honest. So. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the uh, so post so a prenup or even a postnup. Mm-hmm. So this, in a second marriage, a prenup can divide. Say, well, what's pre-marriage is sold and separate, but also future income and future assets are sold and separate or community. Gotcha. So even if you have a prenup agreement that says all future income is sold and separate, future assets are sold and separate, you can still own the house as a couple. Mm-hmm. You can still have a joint bank account. You can still list your spouse as beneficiary on the life insurance. I mean, you can still do all that. Sure. Let me ask this. Um, you, like you're saying, you're talking about prenups and postnups and things like that. Um, is it relatively easy? You know, obviously, before you get married, you establish your prenuptial agreement. You get it in place. whoop de doo You get married. You're having your marriage, and it's great. Five years into the marriage, goals and things change, and you want to alter the prenup. Um, obviously, you can't do a new prenup because – now you're married, so it's going to be a postnup thing. But is it relatively easy to null and void things in a prenup in a postnup later, or is that very difficult to do? As, as long as the parties agree. Sure. I mean, I'll be assuming a yeah. par- agreeing parties, is it a pretty routine thing? Or Yeah, parties to a written contract can agree in writing to modify that contract. Okay. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. Okay. So depending on what has changed, uh, you can change the prenup. You can turn it into a postnup. Either way, uh, where we're finding postnups actually come in handy is with elderly couples. Okay. So if someone has to go into a may have to go to a nursing home in five to ten years, I mean, you got to pl- plan these things ahead. Sure. And there's to quote, for Medicaid to cover the cost of the nursing home, there's an income test. There's an asset test. Okay. In the asset test, you're not left with very much. Um, as long as there's an intent to return home, the home is not considered an asset in the asset test. Okay. But you're only allowed like two grand in the bank. Okay. Which is not much. No. But if you've done a postnuptial agreement where the assets have already been divided. Okay. This is Mike's soul and separate. This is Matt's soul and separate. And then later Matt goes in the nursing home and applies for Medicaid. And they're going to ask, what kind of community assets do you have? Mike's going to say, zip. You can, you can have all Matt's assets you want for the Medicaid, but gotcha. you can't touch mine because gotcha. they're sold on separate assets. Nice. So that might be an option for some some families and things, uh, depending on your circumstances here, too. So. Yeah, so it'll save you know, at least half the assets from the nursing home. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I could see that because, I mean. <laughs> well, and the post-up also says, you know, I'm not liable for Mike's future debts. Mike's not liable for Matt's future debts, including nursing home costs. We just spell that right out. Yeah. I was going to make a joke with my wife's 
probably not listening right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> But um, obviously, you know, this is the stuff. In, in if you're planning on getting married, if you're talking with your spouse or soon-to-be spouse here and planning, I know it's not sexy. I know it's not um, romantic in any way, stretch of the imagination. I get it. And, and, you know, in marriage, they're talking, and it's all story tales and love and, you know, gallivanting and all that stuff. Um, but please, does uh, to ensure that you have more gallivanting and fun and love for the rest of the, your life in the marriage. Uh, doing a little legwork here at the beginning with this prenups and, or at least having that conversation, the conversation. and deciding together what route you want to take. Um, whether it's now, and I know it's a tough conversation because love and marriage, it's all about trust and building it. And, and let's face it, you're, you're, some of us, when you're going through that process, are still earning and learning that side of things. You know, that's why it pays for a little courtship, but that's that's another story for another day. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, you know, at least be thinking and talking about this stuff because if you don't, you're really leaving yourself your 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 marriage open for a potential pitfall before you even say I do, and and that could be a bad. Yeah, mon money causes a lot of uh, arguments during a marriage, yeah. uh, but you know there may be once well, other people are dating and anticipating marriage, maybe one person's assumption of, well, once we get married, then you know we can always afford a better place, a bigger place, a more expensive place. And the other spouse is thinking, well, once we're married, we're going to save rent, mm -hmm. an entire month's rent, just by staying in one place. Oh, there's uh, well, I've run across people that uh, you know. Mike's paycheck is ours, but Matt's paycheck is mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've, I've heard those stories, too. That, those, yep, that really happens. Yeah. Some people think that, and you, the other spouse needs to know that going in, that that's somebody's attitude. That's right. Yeah, because either because those are the things that are either going to make your marriage work or destroy them. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the same page at the beginning, like, you know, if you have that philosophy, you know, my paycheck's mine and, and, and his paycheck's mine, too, or her paycheck's mine. I guess as long as you two are happy that way, knock yourself out. That's we're not. Who am I to tell you how to live? But you know, most people aren't going to be cool with that, and you need to address that at the beginning. Yeah, so, most people know. don't like one-way streets. Yeah, things should be equal. Yeah. Um. So this, this a needed conversations. And what if somebody wants a new car? Yeah. Now, how, how's that get paid? Sure. Does that come from the joint account or just one person's account? So these are... And is the car in both your names? Is it just one person's name? Or can it even be a one person? Does you need the co-signing? You know, yeah. it's, you know, like a, just a for instance on there. It's like my wife's car. It's her car and everything. But I, I, my name's on it too, just because I, I'm the veteran. I got veteran discounts and things like that. Awesome. So my name is on there as mm -hmm. ownership too. But I, I've, I think I drove the car once. And that was just like in the garage to move it to take a trash can out. I have never <laughs> driven it for any, you know, it's her car, you uh -huh. know, it is, yeah. but, but it's technically our car because my name's all over it too. But for that particular instance, we just, because we're getting a bunch of rebates and discounts for veterans and I'm like, I'm a veteran, I'll take those. And, uh, so that's why my name was on the car, but. Well, and it's, uh, and you're right, Mike, it's a difficult conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, all money conversations are difficult simply because in our society, we don't talk about money. My wife said, I am listening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing we're behaving. That's right. Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kim. <laughs> but, uh, that's where we're talking. I guess uh, if you take nothing out of this conversation, uh, when we're done here is, is at least start thinking about these plans, having a, a, having a plan. If you're in that part where you're dating and courting and about to, you know, marriage is a thing that you're talking about, or maybe you're, you're on that path already to get married, or maybe you're just getting married and you're like, now what? Um, you know, prenups obviously yeah. a little bit tricky to do once you're married, but we can talk postnups and all those kind of things too. So. Well, even if you are married, you know, I see a lot of young couples, they, got student loans, they get the big house, they start having kids, and it's like, how are we supposed to save money? Sure. Well, you, well, you should have done that in a different order. Sure. For one thing. Yeah. You should have thought about that before you did all that. Sure. 
and plan it out a little bit better. Um, let me ask, and this is kind of in the vein, but a little different. What um, what recourse does a spouse have? Say they say say they you know fall in love, get married, and all that. Then they found out that their spouse is like a million dollars in debt and is about to suck them in some kind of hole here, financial hole. Is there any recourse for that? If I mean, I know ignorance is is you know not necessarily uh, protection from the law here, but but if you got blindsided by a spouse and then found out they they got all these money problems after you got married, is there any protections there for you, or are you pretty much out of luck here? Well, you have to remember there's love <laughs> and there's money. Yeah, and money's business. They have to treat business like business. Sure. So. Um, so pre-marriage debts are sole and separate debts. So if the husband has student loans, credit cards, repossessed car, mm-hmm. whatever, pre-marriage, those are still his sole and separate debts, and the wife is not liable for them. So the only part that this person is, in essence, screwed on is trying to uh, get new assets. Because obviously, if, if you're together, unless you're buying the house outright in your name only, um, with, those, with that joint credit, with them, you know, and then you, I'm sure there's no way you're getting joint credit for anything if they're in debacles and you're pretty good. I mean, well, so that's one of those things where, you know, the wife complains, oh, I didn't know about all the pre marriage debt. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, did you ask? Yeah. Yeah. Some of it's on you. I mean, if you're dumb enough to not to even have that conversation before you get married, maybe you deserve some of these things on yourself well, if you're not willing to, to, to at least. Ask the Protect question. yourself and yeah. do something for yourself on these things. So that's, and that's part of the discussion is, is how much debt does a person carry? Is there any debt? Are mm-hmm. there student loans? What's the plan for paying those off? Uh, do we pay off the student loans first and get the house second mm-hmm. kind of stuff? Uh, so that's part of the whole conversation of, you know, how are we going to afford what and, and what percentages? Could that be grounds for an annulment? No, annulments, nope. you got to be married to your sister to get an annulment. Okay, that's... That's uh, about it. Okay, I didn't know if there was any legal recourse for getting annulments or just divorces. Uh, no, annulments are when you're married to your sister or other, the marriage is otherwise void. Okay. I guess the rest is just in the eyes of religion. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah not the, uh, not the chur- legally. The churches have their own annulment scheme. Yes, gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. But in terms of the legal world... Annulments only happen for incest, things like that, not because you made a bad decision in Vegas. Correct. <laughs> nope. Need a divorce. Sorry. Just because you had too many tank drinks and ended up at the drive thru thing there in yep. Vegas. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually had one of those calls last week. And, Did you? Yeah. Yeah. I always uh, thought that it happened on TV. I didn't know it happened in real life all the time, but I guess it does. Oh, did. Sure. Well, that's why it's on TVs because it does happen in real life. And so TV reflects real well, life. They do have drive-through uh, wedding chapels, and they they they're a business, and they're open for a reason. Elvis is alive them. and well. Yeah, <laughs> all fifty-seven of them, <laughs> and, and conducting weddings all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping out of airplanes, singing yeah. songs at the buffet. He's doing everything. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just saw the time. I guess Oops. we better wrap up this conversation here. But um, uh, but in all seriousness, we're the joke in here. Please, um, if, if nothing else out of this conversation, hopefully there's some people either in that world where they're talking about marriage or getting – you know, plans for weddings, or, you know, maybe they're earlier in the dating process and might be needing this information down the road here. But please talk with your spouse or your soon to be spouse about these things yep. and, and have that conversation. Even, yep. even if you're not sure how to tackle everything, at least be on the same page with each other and know where everybody stands. I, trust me, the, the key to the, your happy marriage and everything down the road is that being open and honest and talking with each other? Yep. The yeah. good, the bad, and the ugly. At least if because if, if you all come at it from the same angle, I guarantee you guys are going to have a great marriage. It, Absolutely, it, it's going to work. Yeah, is it going to be peachy keen every day? No, because life isn't doesn't work that way. But if you're open and honest with each other and upfront on these things, the rest will work itself out. It will. Absolutely. Yeah. That, you know, uh, talk it over, stay married, uh, even if you don't know how to. Start the conversation. That's how you start it. Yeah. Gee, if I wanted to talk about money and I'm having a problem, what's the best way to approach yeah. it? Yeah. Don't and, and and make sure each other, look. It's not a place of I don't trust you or anything like that. I just I don't want our marriage destroyed 
because we failed to plan on a few of these things, which I, right now may not seem like a big deal, but in the heart of our marriage, it's going to be a very big deal. And, uh, yeah. and that's, you know, it's put it this way. I would imagine if, if every marriage had this conversation or at least we're on the same page and did this, I would say our divorce rate would drop, uh, probably 80, 90%. And drop a lot. Yeah. yeah I would, uh, be willing to guess how it happened because a, probably less marriages. If you figure it out beforehand, maybe you're like, well, maybe we shouldn't be married. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there's a spinner and a saver, they yeah. may decide, and, you know, they're not for each yeah. other. Or... Just because you get along in your friends and thing doesn't mean you should be married all the time, you know, because in essence, that's a, that's a big change. Well, I was watching Last Man Standing last night, yeah. yesterday, and so the, the, the wife says, well, how are we going to, if there's a financial emergency, how are we going to handle it? And the, and the husband says, we'll find a way. She goes, that's not good enough. Right. And, that, and it's not good enough. That's, you know, that's wishful thinking. Oh, we'll find a way. We'll work it out. Yeah. And if somebody's an, a wishful thinker, you need to find that out early. If somebody really can't plan, doesn't have a yeah. concrete plan, you need to know that early. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, you know, sometimes you need the yin and yang. You both can't be wishful thinkers. You can't because you're both going to be waiting a while. Yep. <laughs> yep. But you're absolutely right. Um, do we got a fact or fiction for us here? Well, a little, a, a little quick tidbit. You tidbit, said yeah. Yeah, you said we're sensitive on time. Yeah. So in the New Testament... Um, in the Jewish tradition, mm-hmm. they always talk to God from a mountain. Moses went up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And in the Greek tradition, they would meet in the marketplace, a flat area, and they would discuss politics and religion, Socrates, Plato, that kind of stuff. So in the book of Matthew, it was probably written by someone from the Jewish tradition because he talks about the Sermon on the Mount. Yes, okay. Well, John was written probably by a Greek because the very same event was called the Sermon on the Plain, huh. a flat place. Okay. Because in Greek tradition, that's you spoke from a flat place. Gotcha. But it's the very same event, seen from two different eyes, and just described a little differently. So I think interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 I don't. It doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just said people had different viewpoints. Sure. Just like um, Civil War battlefields. If you never noticed this, the the South would generally name uh, a battle after the nearest town. And the North would name the battles after the nearest body of water. So then you get the Battle of Bull Run or, Manassas or, or the Battle of Manassas, depending yeah. on your perspective. Mm-hmm. The Battle of Antietam or the Battle of uh, Sharpsburg, depending on your... Uh, there's a few exceptions to that rule, but it's mm-hmm. Gettysburg's one. But, but it's well, kind of in the same vein there. Well, you know? the Beatitudes in the New yeah. Testament are, are different. So Matthew may say, blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And then I think it's in Luke, blessed are the poor in spirit. It's just a matter of language and how they say and do So Matthew may say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. And Luke would say, blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Gotcha. So a little bit different angle and makes it interesting. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Just means people had different viewpoints then. Sure. Just like now. It felt bigger deal in one's perspective than others. Maybe it's the flies on the wall. Each saw it from a different angle. (laughs) They saw it or heard it from a different angle or different things being different people. And we all filter what we hear. Sure. Well, yeah, it's just, it's kind of like the, the chain event, you know, you hear and then by the time it's completely different, there's, you know, people interpret things certain ways and, that kind of proves that we don't all interpret the same. <laughs> yeah. yep. um, if anybody has any questions about anything, or if you need some more than just sage legal advice, you need some sage legal action. Uh, okay. Matt Bristol, Bristol Law Office can help it's, you out. Especially if you're looking at Medicare, nursing home costs, think about it. Or yeah. if you, your parents, something like that. Yeah. Call us at 625-5284. Yep. Or uh, go to his website, bristollawoffice.com. There you go. And you can go there and uh, schedule appointment and everything. I know... Um, even still, you know, even though we're less in the COVID world, probably, you know, just don't roll in, call, get appointments, get things that way we can set up for if we need to, you know, do face to face or tele meetings or whatever we got. Yeah. Do. So, we'll, we'll do whatever the client wants to do, whether yeah. it's telephonic or in person, yeah. we're pretty flexible. And you cover anything from what family law to, uh, just, uh, Oh, if, uh, no criminal, no personal injury, but everything else. Yeah. So that's family law, that's bankruptcy, that's real estate, that's quiet titles for probate or for oil and gas. Yeah. We've done that. Yeah. If you, if, 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 if you need, you know, like you said, the marriage stuff, but if you need financial planning type legal 
help. Matt's an expert in we, all that we, kind of stuff. We you do know, estate planning all the time. Yeah, this is if for your business, for your family, all that, um, and 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 understand that stuff. So please, especially small business owners out there, if you're you know you're trying to protect your business with you know through different legal programs and things like that. Um, there's a lot of, you know, requirements and loopholes and things that if you don't do it right, you can end up doing more harm than good. So please, yep. please understand that and talk to a guy like Matt here before yeah, you do it. If you set anything. up your own LLC, that's great, but nobody gave you the speech on how to do it right. So come see me. Please. It'll save you a whole lot of headache later. Oh yeah. Um, again, bristollawoffice.com. What's the phone number one more time, Matt? 625-5284. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, sir. As always, appreciate it. We'll see you here next time. Enjoyed it. Enjoy your week, okay? Thanks, you too. Will do. It is a...